is not Feed Me Friday, it is Narrow Boaty Wednesday, however, oh, I'm doing some feeding, that was last night's tomato and sausage chorizo thing with some pasta. Anyway, welcome to the vlog and uh, today is just a look through Whedon Ordnance, Royal Ordnance Depot which I have to say was very good, and, um, um uh, you'll see. Harry, ah, oh, Britain had been at war with the French since 1793. The incredible amount of muskets, uniforms and artillery, or as it is collectively known, ordnance. Captain Pilkington of the Royal Engineers I'm at the Royal Ordnance site at Weedon Beck, which um, there's my friend Terry here, who's going to talk to us a bit, a little bit about the history of Weedon Beck and the Royal Ordnance sort of stuff. Designed in 19 in 1803, Terry joined up shortly afterwards. Well, maybe a little bit after, but you get the point. His knowledge and history is amazing, so we're just going to sit back and listen to Terry. Terry, thanks for your time, mate. You're more than welcome, more than welcome. As Chris just said, 1798, 1799, 1800, there's a serious threat, Napoleonic invasion. So the government of the day wanted to move all of the arms and ammunition as far away from the south coast as possible to a site that got some form of access, bearing in mind there were no trains or no motorised, tra motorised transport in those days. So after deliberation they decided on Weedon as being the site for a depot to be built. They purchased originally 50 acres of land which was eventually increased to 150 acres and they started building the eight principal buildings for each side of the canal in 1803 and they were completed in 1810. The rest of the buildings on the site were added over the subsequent years. At the same time they started building the eight principal buildings, they cut a pathway, a passageway in the land opposite up to the ground in the canal so they could run a tributary from the canal into the depot. And at the same time as they built the tributary from the canal, uh, from the Grand Union Canal into the depot, they also started to build the buildings for the magazine, which exists 300 metres, the end of the canal. Those buildings for the magazine are still in existence today, not used as magazines, but the buildings are still there and can be visited via a short road journey. At one time they were connected to the depot, but the land was sold off in 1965 when the MOD moved out and there is now housing estate on there. But the buildings for the magazine, as I say, just still exist. Building number four, in the 1830s, there was a serious threat of civil unrest and disobedience for the Reformation, during the Reformation. So in building number four, they based a company of mounted soldiers. Horses were stabled on the ground floor and the soldiers were billeted on the first floor. Of the eight buildings that exist today, building number seven in the 1840s, they put in a second floor. Each floor, I should say at the moment, has got a ground floor and a first floor. And building number seven, they put in an additional floor put 120 cells in there and that became a military prison until 1875. Building number five next door to it was the administration block for the prison. The main uh, mode of transport for moving goods in and out of the depot in the initial stages were along the canal but in 1885 they installed a narrow cage railway system into the depot which went from building number 15 across the canal by the Scherzer Bridge and served buildings 2, 4, 6 and 8. And then in 1890 they brought a branch line from the main London to Birmingham Standard Cage Railway into the depot via a road opposite called Prill Road 
it came into the depot past a railway way bridge and it exist, existed then straight through the depot into the magazine area which I explained earlier was 300 metres the other end of the depot. Now, during the Second World War, magazine obviously held a considerable amount of ammunition, explosives, and at one time during the 18th century, 19th century I should say, uh, there were over 3,000 tonnes of gunpowder held in the magazine, and together with the other items on the site, the, the guns, the mortars, etc., uh, there was a lot of ammunition and explosives held on the site. We was rather fortunate in as much as that during the Second World War the German military never got any indication of what was held on the site. The only problem they had on one occasion, a German bomber was on his way back from a raid either Coventry or Birmingham. He still had bombs on board and he couldn't take them back to Germany, otherwise he'd have been shot, wouldn't he? So he unloaded them about three or four fields away. And all that done was to make one big hole in the floor. It didn't do any damage to livestock, property or human beings whatsoever. There was army barracks and parade ground held here. Uh, there was up to, at one time, 2,000 uh, troops stationed here. And to the one side of that was the army's equitation centre, where the elite horses for the military were trained and stabled. Early 1930s, the Great Britain show jumping team was based there for training and stabling purposes, until in 1936, it went across and saw Mr. Hitler for the infamous 1936 Olympic Games. Terry, I'd just like to say thank you very much for your time and, um, and for your knowledge and everything you've done. Great, mate. Thank, thank you very much. You're more than well. More than well. Yes. Okay, mate. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. <laughs> and of course today, the Royal Ordnance Depot is now a hive of industry. So one side is a climbing wall and the other side is a fitness, posy, pilates, yoga, ballet strengthening type of class. Um, and the first lesson was free. Well, I don't think I'm going to attend, I don't think I'm going to be here long enough, but you, it's, it's nice, you know, if you're local to Weedon and I'm interested in climbing or pose fitness or anything like that then then I think this is quite a good place to go and there's also a place called Rivernitz. Don't know. Ooh, that's interesting. I was talking to Terry, Terry earlier on and he, I asked him about the numbering system in, uh, in this barracks. So you've got the four, the eight main buildings that run across the canal. It's like number seven and then behind that goes 78. I thought, well, how does a numbering system work? You know, imagine you are um, work services and um, you know, you, you, all the buildings are numbered, and you say, well, you, know, you need to go between, um, uh, to building 78, which is between 15 and, and, and eight. Well, how does that work? And there's quite a simple answer. As the buildings were built, they got a new number. And as they were knocked down, that number was never reused. So that kind of makes sense to me. You know, the, the building 78 is newer than building number one to eight. Ah, there we go. I don't think I've told that particularly well, but that, that's, the, um, that's the numbering system. Somewhere to put your ash and then put under your duvet. Warm your bed up. Maximus Meridius Decimus. These things, they're all up there, look. Have you seen those? How good's that? I Spartacus. <laughs> First time I've had air for a long time. 
We don't make them like they used to. Some pots there. I wonder if they're from the Roman era, along with the helmets. Blofeld's cat. Is that the, um, hey, Wayne? From Constable, not so sure, don't think so, but you know, looks quite a nice picture. <laughs> this is a nice little bric-a-brac place. All sorts of, what I will call stuff. Yeah, stuff. I don't know if some of that's Landro at the back. If any of you know anything to do with China, you know, not the country China, but you know, porcelain China. I need to be careful. I don't want to knock anything and smash it. Move this a little bit. There's this is Neil, by the way, and he's got himself a nice little business at Weed and Beck. So, yeah. how did how did the business start, Neil? Um, and what is it? What is it? Uh, basically, industry and supply uh, came out of a little bit of a hobby, really. My, my background's advertising and design. Worked in London for years. Uh, moved up just off the canal in Bronston about eleven years ago. <laughs> A little bit of design work and I got into my classic cars and my bikes. I started doing some automotive artwork basically. Okay. Uh, that we set up as a, a website, um, selling online art prints, uh, posters, everything for stickers and t shirts that you see around here. And out of it was a project to learn how to do an e commerce site that kind of took off really. Um, so we, we started off selling online, we opened a little shop up in Rugby, but uh, due to Covid we were forced to close it down, it's too small for social distancing or whatever. We developed online and then we decided to move down to this amazing uh, place, the depot, um, where we've basically, it's a meeting place for classic cars, hot rods, motorbikes. Uh, come down, grab a coffee. We've only been here since November, but already we're really optimistic with the amount of people coming down. As places, one yeah. is kind of like an Art Deco antique uh, an almost, if you like, contemporary. So I'm, I'm, yep. I'm edging my bets here. Right, so okay. What, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what it is, but it's a great place to be. Yeah. I mean, the original buildings were built in 1802, started in 1802, when it was the base of the British Army when they thought Napoleon was going to invade. I believe our building's a bit later, this actual one, it's got bigger windows because this is where all of the, the British Army's rifles were 
if there was an upgrade to part of the rifle or stuff like that, they used to bring them in here, where there's so extra lights they could see what they were doing. And the building, there's doors that go all the way along, and it was a bit of a conveyor belt system as well, with stuff that used to, you know, guns would come in, there were browning guns that were re resorted out next door, but everything was also for storage, it was oiled up and made ready for storage, so great so history. Here's a little bit of history for you, I don't know what yeah. number, what, what's the number of the building? Building 14. So it's quite early? Because yeah. they built the, the numbers are how they built the building. Yeah, because oh, okay. I found that out. They started at number one. Really? Wow, okay. I didn't know and that. as the buildings were built, they yeah. put them a new number. Oh, wow. As the buildings okay. were knocked down, they didn't use that number again. Okay. okay. So yeah. there we go. This is one of the early buildings then. Yeah, wow, well, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's a, uh, yeah, it's an amazing site. It's a bit cold in here. I can't wait for the weather to turn. But we're. Yeah, we, we were next door for a while, but now we've got the direct access to our side, so we've already got a few, like we've got a rock and roll day planned, and we're going to have American cars outside, and bring some motorbikes in, and we've got all home baked cakes, and sausage rolls, and just a, like a meeting place for classic car people, really. So. I just think this is one of those startups which is gifted almost to work because you've got the right location for the right style of car to yeah. the right all that yeah. stuff you've got here is, yeah. is about okay. yeah antique isn't it? yeah exactly yeah it's um yeah. i've been i've been a collector since about the age of 14. i think i bought my first gramophone at 14 and i've always wanted a proper big man cave um, this, can you just remind is, some of the audience gramophone gramophone it's a uh, yeah but, well it was pre-vinyl I think yeah, it was yeah. wax and it was a wind up so <laughs> but my the one the first one I bought was a his, his master's voice portable for about 1922 still works so yeah lovely lovely thing it's the germ of the HMV thing with, with the little dog and, and the gramophone nipper yeah nipper there we go yeah he was called nipper and it was a, and the one's called his master's voice was the dog was confused because he was listening <laughs> to his master's voice oh was, wow I didn't know that yeah if you think about it the dog's there and you can hear his like who's that yeah, yeah, looking, looking in the, yeah. Yeah. yeah that's what okay, it is okay, good time. Yeah. we've learned something from each other today yeah, haven't we exactly yeah yeah cool cool one of the nicest things where the uh, young lad turn up because a lot of older guys with classics it was a lad who was only 16 and he had a 1970s Honda 50cc bike right. so someone right at the beginning of the journey of getting into classic cars and that and he he traveled quite a way to see us actually you know, it's about 20 miles which is a long way on a moped um, so yeah it's good we've had a real mixture lots of yeah, lots of we've had some posh cars we've had some real basic old things, but you know, it doesn't matter. Anyone, anyone that keeps one on the road is like... Oh, absolutely. That's what it's about, yeah. But interestingly, I, I've seen your chopper t-shirt for the ladies. Yep. It? I mean, yep. choppers, I wish they were still knocking about. Well, they are. Are they? Yeah, oh yeah, if you've got 1,500 quid, you might get one. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah they, in fact, there's a, um, I talked to someone today, there's a big chopper meet every year down at uh, building Aquadome just down the road, so we're hoping to get a few of the chopper riders oh, up here this summer. Because weren't they great? Well, they were. But one of the reasons, one of the reasons I'm probably such a collector is when I was a kid, my mm -hmm. the bloke round the corner had one, but I did, and I had all the, everything second hand. So yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's probably why I got to collect so much stuff now. <laughs> but uh, but I have one of those bikes with with yeah, the banana seat. Oh, okay. I bought one of those, and then you had the cow horn. No, yeah. no, because it was a bastardised bike. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cowards, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what was that? 70s? Yeah, as a kid, yeah. 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 I was born in 63, so. Oh, you're a couple of years era. older than me then? Yeah. Yeah. Yes, first when skateboards come out, and we could just get a um, piece of wood and a roller skate. Roller skates, weren't yeah. they? Yeah. <laughs> no pads, no pads. <laughs> <Yeah, things>. Exactly. <laughs> oh, yeah. I, mean, uh, I was out brought up in the countryside. I remember one of the most exciting days was being rushed to hospital, not me myself, but my mates we used to swing across the road on a big rope swing. And one of them, my, my mates fell arm first and snapped his arm and we, we all got a ride in the hospital with a great <laughs> Uh, is it spent? No health and safety. Oh, yeah. no, exactly. He was all right. But that's how you learn, though, wasn't it? And that's where common yeah. sense comes from. Yeah. Like, don't yeah. do that again. Jimmy yeah. fucked up. Like, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, all good fun. All good fun. Any more than that? What's that all? Lovely. I bet you did that. Thanks very much.
Not so sure if this can fly, but um, never know. This is going to be the meeting room. I actually think it's quite cool. Let's let's go to the aeroplane and let's have a meeting. <laughs> yeah, that's actually very nice. Just imagine this is a Cessna something or other. I'm not very good at planes. I know I was in the Air Force, but I don't think we flew Cessnas. This is gasoline juice. This is from their website. We are petrol heads at heart at gasoline juice. Every artwork is created by active car designers from the most exciting automotive companies that together decided to share their passion and creations inspired by some of the most amazing machines on the planet. As car designers, we always want to go further and deliver something else expressing our passion for cars and art in each of the artwork, t-shirts, poster or sculpture. Not only cars, but planes, spaceships, boats, trains, jets, fighters, everything that moves fast, smells like burnt rubber, or makes your heart beat faster. Other small industries at, at Weedon Beck is a Mercedes type of place. Um, there's car fixer upper type things, there's a brewery, there's a transporty type thing, a record shop. Do you remember those LPs, long players? A car garage. Susie's Pets and what seems to be an Airbnb, although I don't know what it is to be fair. It's tonight's dinner, actually. Doesn't look too bad. So that was um, Weedon Beck and the Royal Ordnance Depot. And I actually thought there were some great industry ideas, some good designers. Neil, fantastic bloke. The guy from the gasoline juice place, he was, uh, you know, let me in his aircraft, have had, had a little look around, and he doesn't open yet. And there were some great little little places there. There's a children's play area as well on one of the top floors. I think it's um, um I think it's great that, that there's lots of um use that have been made from old military buildings. More of it I think should happen. Thanks for watching, thanks for liking, thanks for subscribing for those of you that have got this far and thank you very much and if you haven't subscribed give it a go because it kind of helps me out and it makes me feel good. Um, next week, don't know. Oh, I'm heading to Braunston. There we go. Spoiler alert. Do I get there? Probably. I've not got there yet. Um, yeah, Braunston. So until next time, ciao, Papa.